Welcome back to Highlands Postcards from Boston. My name is Bob Babbitt. We are also brought to you by Polar, my guest, American record holder at, oh, I don't know, the half marathon, the marathon, at one point, everything from what, 5,000 on I, up? Yeah, yeah. Dina Castor joins <laughs> us. Dina, it is always so nice to have you. And going back in the day, when you used to come to our endurance awards and yes. bring Ryan Hall with, and you know, I, I, I always was just a baby then. I yeah. know <laughs> you put him in the overhead. I think, but I always appreciated that because you know we were known sort of this. This is a triathlon awards, but it's like no, this is for everybody. And you were one of the people out there telling the other guys that hey, this is all one community. And we're lo very lucky to be in a sport that's so inclusive. Don't you think? Absolutely. You can. Absolutely. We're equal opportunity abusers. Yep. Come we and join care. us. Come and join <laughs> us. So, but you started this running sort of competitively, what, 11 years old, something like that? 11, yeah. 11 years old. Yeah, and it's been a love affair ever since. It really has, because you were breaking master's records, what, when you were 41? Yeah, just a couple years ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah a couple years what ago. What was it so. about this sport that was, that just connected with you? Because we see a lot of people come in, you know, ships in a night, come in four or five right. years, gone. But to stay at that level, I think it all comes down to, to following something that gives you joy. And from the very beginning at 11 years old, getting unleashed on the Santa Monica Mountains in yes. California and seeing eagles soar overhead and granite peaks and the smell of the sagebrush and the eucalyptus, like just all these senses that I had never, I, I knew them all, I right. knew the movie theaters, but right. to be um, to be out on those trails was so intoxicating. And I think always rediscovering that joy and, um, and really pushing forward that when you, the bigger the challenge, the um, the more gratifying the the and pleasurable the end result. So right. here at the Boston Marathon, that's a big deal. People are doing 26.2 miles. It's a heroic feat, no matter if you're running world records up at the front or um, making a P personal best in the back of the pack. It's um, it's such a gratifying thing to to push your limits and persevere through it all. And so um, I think that's what keeps me going. That it always hurts. No, you know, I'm not, I might my fastest days might be behind me, but um, but to push through and get that best out of myself on a given day really is rewarding. So when I look back at American running, we had through the 80s with Alberto Salazar and Mary Slaney, we were great on the world scene. Then 80s, 90s, we sort of fell off. Little slump. Little slump. Uh, then a mammoth track club. You. Ryan Hall, Meb, Meb Kofleski, yeah. Josh Cox, all you guys going together. It was a little bit of a, uh, like, hey, we really haven't had any training together right. since Athletics West. How special was though that time leading into Athens? I just think the, being together the with synergy that. of a group. There's nothing like it. It's yes. so intoxicating that, um, and I think that's why these these major marathons are so exciting for people because you feel that sense of community while you're here. Yes, you do. And, yes. Um, and so I think that that is a big draw for people is being at this expo and feeling the energy and the buildup of of what is. A fantastic right. event. Um, just feeling that that sense of, of doing something bigger together is, um, is I think, an important um, an important emotion to bring to that start right. line. That you're you're in it and you're supportive. And on a down day, a, a teammate or a friend bring, lifts you right back up. And you're expected to do the same if they come um, with their with their shoulders up in their ears or a, or a bad attitude. So um, I think it just that sense of commitment and. Um, and having to show up um, and give it your best at every morning when you approach that team because you've got to give back. And at that point, the East Africans, Ethiopians, they were dominant in the world scene. When it came to the Olympics, at longer distances, the Americans weren't a factor. Right. Heading into 2004, there was no real reason for people to think any differently. Yep. But you guys, with Joe Vigil and Coach Larson and all of you training together, did you get a sense that, you know what, things are changing here a bit? Yeah, and we put our training group together um, specifically to answer a very poor showing at the Sydney Olympics yes. for the for the distance crew. We had um, terrible showing in the marathon. I didn't advance at, at the time. There was a um, 10K semifinals and then the final, and I didn't even advance to the final in the yes. 10K. So um, I was one of those people that had a very poor showing, and we just started to emulate what was going on around the world and that the, the Rift Valley is where all the great performances, right. Olympic medals and world records were coming from. And so we 
got our group together at altitude and got the best in the country to train together and, and prepare together. And um, and the end result for Meb and I were Olympic medals, which is what we were intending. But every single person in that group ran personal bests, which was extraordinary. So you go to Athens and it's hot, 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 hot. Uh, what was the game plan for you that day? Oh, conservative. When yeah. um, I, I think what makes it fun is that we're, it's not only a competition against against the people you're lining up against, but um, but you also have to play the course and the and the weather conditions. And so we trained well for the hills. We um, overdressed in training to train for the heat. When the the women's bus pulled up in the town of Marathon, it was 101 degrees, and I thought, oh my God, okay, so I'm heat trained, but I don't know if I'm 101 degree heat trained. Uh -huh. So my goal was just to be the last to overheat. That's what I wanted to do. I knew I was going to overheat, but I was going to be the last to do it. And so went out conservatively and um, and just started picking off people. And that momentum and adrenaline yeah. that comes with with counting down um, really excited me. And I was getting confirmation from people on the sidelines um, that I was in. 20th place and then 15th yes. and 12th and 8th so the countdown began and I just kept reeling in girls so when you're heading into the stadium do you know I you're didn't I, I, I passed Elf Neshi Lemu about a kilometer before the stadium thinking that I was took over third place and then a voice in very clear English told me I was in fourth and I thought oh my god did I miscount you know math is never good at the end of a marathon no math and math and running don't yes, go together yes yeah. and so I was thinking maybe I just miscalculated, so I said, I'll just wait until I get into the stadium and got into the stadium and a beautiful voice came on and spoke Greek and I heard my name, but I didn't know what it meant. And then in, um, then I was- French? Yes, and then French. <laughs> and then and then I'm hoping like, come on, Spanish or, or English so I know I know yeah. what place I'm in. And and she came on to say that Dina Katz, Castor was gonna capture bronze. And that, that's what that's when it made like an emotional lap around around the yeah. track because I could hear my mom's voice screaming. Wait, my wait, family. There's a, what a hundred thousand people, but yes, you can pick out your I mom. I can hear my mom. Yeah, her <laughs> woohoo's can be heard from a long way away. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So then you get the bronze, and of course you want to run and hug the family a whole bit. But then you got drug tested. Oh yeah. Uh, when did you finally? Reconnect with the family. I was able, uh, it, my agent, uh, Ray Flynn, had a really hard time hailing a cab. So he was this like crazy Irishman in the in the middle of the street trying to flag down And a, you don't have your medal on yet. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> I got it the next day. Yeah. Um, but then was able to join my family at maybe 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, join them in this Greek restaurant yes. and the entire restaurant stood up, because that's their normal dinner time. Yes. Um, the entire restaurant stood up and gave and applauded me a, for yeah, you. It was How great. How cool yeah. is that? And we ate and drank into the night. It was great. Well, and then, and I, I think I remember seeing an interview with you, and you were like, this is great, but I want to see how Meb does. Yo, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I had flown flown home already. Andrew and I had flown home to Mammoth, yeah. and while well, my family went on some like island, Greek island tour, um, a cruise, um, but I wanted to get home because I've yes. been traveling for a while. We had training camp on the island of Crete, and so I get um, I get home, and the next week is is the, the end of yes. end of the Olympic Games, the the final event being the men's marathon, and so I don't have television, so I let myself into Meb's house because he does have television. Let myself into Meb's house and um, with some friends, yes. actually like maybe 20 of us, <laughs> and we watched. The, and one of them was a, um, a guy Mario who was riding his bike next to Meb that whole summer because yes. no one can run and keep up with them. No. So riding his bike next to him and um, and we were watching the marathon and watching like Meb ran a very different race. He put himself in the in the pack and um, and really really pushed um, more aggressively than yes. I had run in the beginning stages. And he um, he ran a brilliant race. And as soon as we knew that he was going to medal, I ran down to my car and grabbed a bottle of champagne and we just left him with a sink full of dirty champagne glasses. But he had champagne glasses. So that's the point of this story. He had beautiful champagne glasses. Um, because he has a lot to celebrate, that man. <laughs> that was that was pretty fun. Yeah. So then you're, uh, you're, you guys are honored in the beautiful town of Mammoth. Yes, How we had a little parade. How fun was that? A little parade, parade in Mammoth yeah. for you guys. Yeah, it was awesome. The, the community up there, it's a community of athletes, yes. snowboarders and skiers, and they've seen their fair share of, of Olympians in the winter sports, but Nev Never and I were able to, 
to bring home some summer medals for them. How did that change your world, coming away with a, a Olympic medal, or did it? Yeah. I think it's just a off, checked off your your medal in an American Rectum. Can I say that, that word? Um, I, those things. Was that Chicago? Us, yes. Yeah. Those things to keep you angry and. Um, oh, you can always look back. You started so young. Um, Not done yet. Yeah. Challenges my positivity and optimism. Yes. It challenges me on a daily basis, and I wouldn't trade that for the world. Having this vehicle of this sport to to drive that. But it did change American running. Your bronze and Meb silver, it changed our perception of us. Yeah. That, hey, wait a second, why can't we compete exactly. with the rest of the world? But that's what that's what we all offer each other in this sport. It started here in Boston with yeah. Roberta Gibb and, yeah. and Catherine Switzer that these women paved the way um, in very different ways, but in very bold and courageous ways to be able to have now more than 50% representation How on the fun starting is line that? being women. So it's really incredible that that this sport can inspire on so many levels. Well, and I see that when you look at the Olympic and sprint distance and triathlon, it's pretty much 50-50. Yeah. And a lot of the rock and roll events are 65% women, right? right? 70%. And the ability levels and the motivation, it's all different. It's, it's all different. We all have our own right. internal reasons for doing it, but the fact that we're doing it, it's a healthy, healthy way to express ourselves and to become better people through sport. So when you see, because back when you were just starting, Really, the people who ran were sort of elite runners, yeah. even the age groupers. Yep. Over the years, it's become, where it used to be the last finish was four hours and 15 in a marathon. Yeah. That could be the median, right? Yeah. That could be the middle, and you have six hours, seven hours. I, I love it, and I'm, I'm sure you do too, because it yeah, brings absolutely. such a great cross section. Yeah, right before waiting to come on your show, Bob, I was talking to a lady who had a boot on, and she's she's running and walking on Monday in this race for charity. Like, that's incredible. Isn't that great? Well, and that's the other aspect that's changed so much, the charity component. Yes. I, you know, little sports, big heart. Yeah. The, the amount of giving back. Because I think, at the end of the day, these can be selfish sports. Right. You just go out right. and run on your own. But the fact that you're giving back, I think, makes it... Yeah, it makes it make sense. Absolutely. And the causes are really um, touch people's hearts, yes. the, the causes that they believe in and the causes they're raising money for and awareness of, um, which is their driving force when they're out there. I think um, since the charity component has been implemented here in Boston, yeah. they've raised uh, more than a quarter billion dollars. Wow. Pretty unbelievable. That is pretty yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, and that's a number that was just said at a press conference this morning, so it's a fresh statistic, but that's changing lives. No question about yeah. it. Yeah. So when you look at your fondest memories, obviously bronze medal, you know, 219 marathon. Uh, now, how many marathon wins did you end up with? Not many. Yeah. I mean, maybe four. Four? Yeah. Four. Better than zero. Yeah. I got zero. Okay, I got zero. Right. One of my fondest wins was at the Olympic trials in 2008 here on the streets of Boston. It was a really... Um, just a patriotic day because yes. it had the Olympic trials um, logo on it. and. All of the um, runners that were going to be competing on Monday came out for the Saturday Saturday trials. So we had this built-in support. Looped course? It was a looped course, so just crowds along the whole way. You must have loved that. I did. I yes, thrive on a, that. You yeah. do, right? Because yeah. some people, I remember talking to Ryan Hall about this. He said, some people are like, oh, I got to save my energy. I can't yeah, wait or have Ryan, tunnel vision. Ryan was like, Take high it five off. it. He yep. loved it. He said yeah. he soaked it in and yeah. it really powered him. Yeah, and I think um, I think if you can absorb everything around you as inspiration, translate everything to inspiration. Because even if I'm running and someone shouts a word of encouragement to my competitor, I say, I'm taking that. I'm going to take that hey, with me. That's yeah. for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> my oh, name no, is don't. Kamish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I am Kamish. Thank yes. you. Thank yes. you for giving but me you're, that. From the crowd screaming to the to the um, landmarks you're passing, to yes. the, the history um, that marched on that, that race before you, which is very rich here in Boston. Yes. I think it's all important to, to take in. So did you win London? Yes. And that was your, was in that the 219? 2006, that's my, where my personal best is from. That yeah. the 219. Yep. yep. So winning a classic like that and, and basically breaking the American record at the same time. Yeah, it was. That's a, pretty special. It was, it was a special day because it was a lot of, a lot of the, the um, lessons and tools that I've learned over the years that came together. And um, it's one of those days where you just execute perfectly. And yes. um, we don't get those days all the time. A lot of times we have to struggle yeah. and fight to stay on top. And that was just a a smooth run, which um, I'm grateful for when it can happen on race day. So what will you be doing with John Hancock this week? Um, this week, I'm just being at the expo a lot of the times, going out with John Hancock clients. and oh, fun. Um, it's wonderful. The energy of, of this event, the, um, the sponsors, 
hands down, um, it, it, it's a world marathon major, so it's a, Now, don't you also, don't you have a camp? Are you doing a camp? A running camp, up yeah. Up at the Mammoth? I do. This is going to be our third year doing it, a very... Um, I've heard great things, intimate. because not only are you an amazing runner, but... You cook a little I bit. I like to cook. You yeah. are, yeah. And yeah. I also like to eat, so I like I like being at major races for that too. <laughs> this is a this is a city of great food. Yes. Um, but they, um, the the, um, the guests at this retreat have had, have had a just memories to last a lifetime. We get so close, still texting and yes. staying Friends in contact. Forever, right? Absolutely. And so I, I do a cooking demonstration at the Westin Monache there, that where my guests stay. Yes. Only, only first class for them, and um, and so it's a it's a fun event. Not intense running and no. long miles, but just short, scenic. My favorite places. We run to waterfalls and a national monument, and. Um, and dine well into the night and um, have classes, go down to the track for drills and form analysis. Okay, so we, where do we sign up for We this? pack where, a lot where, where, in where, 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 where. my website. Don't tell these people. I want to know. Yeah. My website, dinacaster.com. Dinacaster.com. And yeah, and it's called the Mammoth Running Escape, and it's truly an escape. Come up to Mammoth anytime, really. Yes. I mean, I... I host this this event, but um, but really coming up there any time of year. Like you can still, we're going to be skiing until the middle of July with how much snow we have this year. So now, were you a big time skier before you guys moved to Mammoth to We've start? We lived there for 16 years, and I skied for the first time this January. No way! My, okay, you're always worried about well, your contracts. Probably no, said no skiing. No, I never no? wanted to because I didn't like it. But my daughter told me that I can't say I don't like something if I don't try it, which is the line I use when she won't eat her vegetables. You can't say you don't like a Brussels sprout uh, if you haven't eaten a Brussels sprout. So she got she me there. She reversed you. She got me there and she got me up on that hill. That's Piper, and now huh? I can say I don't like it. <laughs> Do you not like it? No, I don't. <laughs> it's cold. It's yeah, windy. Yeah, it's I belong blowing. in the lodge next to the fireplace. And then you can fall down and then you have to stand up yeah, again. And then you have snow in your pants. Now, did you ski or just snowboard? I ski. That's better because snowboarding. Was fun. Is I was so sore the next day. Oh, you used because a muscle I you never seen. Because I snow the entire time, like just oh. break, 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 break. I'm like that on the bike too. I white knuckle it even on an uphill yes scary which is probably why i know bike very well thank you so much yeah, for, for just you, Bob. what you brought to our industry <laughs> really you. just thank love you. the personality just love the fact that you're the the way you feel about running comes through uh, right? you thank, love it yeah, and everybody knows I love it. it i do and that gets the next person in <laughs> right. dina caster has been our guest again uh, this is highlands postcards from boston my name is bob babbitt we are also brought to you by polar Hold on, everybody. Actually, I think that is a wrap for this first day of Highlands Postcards from Boston. We will catch you tomorrow. Thank you.